Hey everybody, Fradam here, and tonight I want to try to answer a question that is brought to my attention um, quite often, usually by new users or new users to Linux or people who are looking to switch to Linux. Why are there so many different distributions? And I don't know if I can fully answer this question. It seems like every day there's a new fork of one version of Linux or another, and they just give it a new name and give it a new look, and there's not really a whole lot different but someone's getting their feet in the Linux world and creating their own distribution, so there it is. So I got kind of curious and I wanted to take a look at the top distributions on DistroWatch. And I know before anyone says anything, DistroWatch isn't the best place to look for the top, but right now it's, it's the easiest place to access that information. So I went there and I grabbed a list of the top 20 distros. And right now, the top 20 are, as you can see here, uh, Linux Mint, Debian, Manjaro, Ubuntu, Antergos, OpenSUSE, Fedora, Solus, Elementary, Zorin, TrueOS, Deepin, CentOS, Arch, PC Linux OS, React OS, Kali, Antix, Lite, and Magia. Now, it's like, that's a lot. That's 25 different distros. So even if someone was just looking to see what is available in the top 25, it can still be confusing. What do we do? Well, I wanted to break it down so that it kind of made a little more sense. So I broke it down by root distribution. And what I came up with is the top is Debian. So the top eight distributions in the top 20 are Debian based and that is basically um, not counting Debian itself is um, Mint, Ubuntu, um, Elementary, Zorin, uh, Deepin, and Kali, and Light and Antix. So that kind of breaks it down to what's different between those eight distributions that makes one shine over the other. Well, honestly, in my personal opinion, not much. It just seems to be stuff like themes and look and feel. But underneath the look and feel, it's still just a Debian-based or an Ubuntu-based distribution. I'm saying Debian because Ubuntu is basically based on Debian. So there's not really much difference. So I feel if you pick one of those eight distributions as your desktop, you're going to have pretty much the same experience as if, you know, between the, the top, those eight. It's not going to be much difference. It'll depend on which desktop environments they support, but most of them, if they only offer a KDE environment, you can still install GNOME if you want. The packages are there and it's really easy and you can make them look the same. So it's they're basically the same thing in my opinion. Now you, you guys can disagree with me if you want, but this is just how I kind of look at it. The next uh, top, which surprised me, was what I call the independent category. That means they don't have a root um, distribution. So the ones that I found that were independent were obviously Debian, um, Arch Linux. Oh, that's not even in the top 20, is it? Oh yeah, number 14. So Arch Linux, um, OpenSUSE, Fedora, now, Fedora is kind of iffy on there because I feel like it's its own because it doesn't really borrow from Red Hat. It seems like Red Hat borrows from it. So Fedora, you might want to take off the list. That would make it five independents, but I'm going to count it as, a, as an independent. Um, PC Linux OS, React OS, and Magia. Magia. Magia? But Magia, even though it's considered independent, and same with PC Linux OS, they're both forks of Mandriva, which I don't think they pull from Mandriva anymore. Matter of fact, I'm not even sure if Mandriva is still an active distribution. I know there's open Mandriva. So I'm, I think they took Mandriva, forked off, and became their own thing. So I'm counting them as independent. That's nice to see. I would rather see more independent so that you have more differences in your environment than you would if it was just you know, another offshoot of Ubuntu. So after that, we have Arch Linux, but there's only two in the top 20, and that's Antergos and Mandrake, I think was the other one. Let me see my notes here. 
Uh, Manjaro, sorry, it used to be called Mandrake years ago. My age is showing, I guess. So those are, you know, two different. Um, I mean, they're, they're Arch, but they're just, their installers are better. Now, when it comes to Arch offshoots, that's what really sets them aside is how their installers work. I believe that Antergos has a great installer, but doesn't work with newer NVIDIA cards, the GTX 10 XX series. Um, crash you have to have a lower end GPU because they use the open source version of the NVIDIA drivers and for some reason it doesn't support the higher end cards so then you have um, Manjaro I haven't tried installing it in a while but it seems to me that it's uh, you can probably hear that my cat's trying to break into my tool chest anyway sorry guys for the interruption there um, I have two cats in my room with me right now, and one of them is just laying there trying to sleep, and the other one is being rambunctious. Okay, so back to it. Manjaro has a different installer, which I think might work better with newer NVIDIA cards. I haven't verified this, so don't quote me on that. Um, also, Man Manjaro, even though it's Arch-based, it has its own repositories, so you tend to get a different package versioning. But the AUR, which is the user submitted packages, work in Manjaro. Where with Antergos, it's full on Arch with one extra repository. And you can, if you remove that Antergos repository, then you're running pure Arch. Um, from my experience, um, I run Antergos. So I'm a little biased on that one. And it's, you know, it's the distribution I like. Anyway, so next on that is that Mandriva. So I don't know a lot of man about Mandriva, but it's different. Um, Mandriva used to, back in the day, I maybe that one was the one that was called Mandrake and became Manjaro. I don't know. It's confusing. Um, I don't know much about Mandriva. And here's what's interesting. There's one distribution on the top 20 list that is not even Linux. FreeBSD is on there. It is number... Number... Oh, wait, you know what? It, since I took my notes, it actually dropped down to number 23. But, I mean, if you want to have a fun ride installing something, hey, do FreeBSD. You'll probably come back screaming and running to, um, you know, Linux from scratch after that one. Actually, FreeBSD is pretty nice. I ran it years ago before, um, before I was a hardcore Linux guy. I gave it a try for a little bit on an old Mac. And, um... It's pretty cool. It's a different. It's different, and you got to get used to the port system, portage. I think it's called. So my point is, out of the top twenty distributions, most of them are Debian or Ubuntu based, and the rest are either independent or Arch. And I bet you, if we compiled the list and looked at the whole hundred, you, we would see the same thing. Like this one. Dev one, I bet you that's Debian. So if we click on that, we look and see, yeah, Debian based. So my question, I think the real question is, is if I install one distro that's based on Debian versus another distro based on Debian, what am I getting between the two? I've done a lot of system installs and I've done you know, I've done a lot of videos. Look at my video archives. You'll see I've installed a lot of versions of Linux and it's almost always the same. The installers look the same. The desktops when finished looks the same. Maybe the fonts different or the color schemes different or, or, you know, there's icons are a little different, but underneath the hood, it's the same thing. If I install a Debian based or Ubuntu based distribution, I know I can app get install all the same apps and it's the same versions it's the same updates everything's the same when there's an update pushed for one it comes out for the others i've never really run into anything that's different now some of the ones that distros that i've installed and done videos on that i've been impressed with are stuff like solace i tried to run solace on my work laptop as permanently and i ended up having to pull it out and install something i was more familiar with because of the networking tools, I'm a system administrator um, in the daytime. That's my day job. The networking tools I needed didn't exist on Solus, or I couldn't figure out how to install them, and I didn't have the time. 
I was in a, in a lurch. I didn't have time to sit there and try to figure out how to install this stuff. So I just booted up a live Arch USB and did a quick 20 minute install and boom, I was set up what I needed. But I was still impressed with their package management and all that stuff. And, and I like seeing the independent new distributions that are different than your typical Ubuntu type Debian installer. And I don't have anything against Ubuntu. I don't have anything against Debian. I think they're great. But when you have 50 distributions and they're all apt, get, install, whatever, and you go and you boot off the live CD and it's the same thing, you get the splash screen, it just looks a little different, and you click the install, and the installer looks identical to all the other Ubuntu based or Debian based distributions, except that the graphics are a little different, different splash screens during the install, but it's all the same. It gets a little ridiculous. And it's like, why are we fragmenting the Linux community like this? I mean, it's great having choices, but do we really need a hundred plus distributions? to just really, I feel like it muddies the water. It confuses things. And there really are, look, Xubuntu, Ubuntu Budgie. Um, why do we need Ubuntu Budgie? Why can't we just install Ubuntu and then install the Budgie desktop? Why do we need a distro for that? Why do we need, you know, it's just, it's. I know L Ubuntu is supposed to be a light version and light is a light version. So why, why do we need all this? So that's something to think about. If you're a developer or someone who works on distributions, ask yourself, why are we doing this? Why are we forking off new distributions every other day and, and trying to pass them off as something new and innovative when they're not, they're just rebranded re skinned versions of Ubuntu or reskinned versions of Fedora or, you know, it, it doesn't just happen in Ubuntu. It's just that happens to be the one that is the most popularly rebranded. It's just, it seems like it's getting out of hand. That's my rant. That This video, I guess you can consider a rant video. I, I would just love to see this hundred... This list of 100 distros, I would love to see it drop down to, say, maybe 25 distros and then have them all uniquely offer something that you can't get from the others. So, how I don't know. Can we do that? Is that a pipe dream? Anyways, that's it for this video. It was just a little bit of a rant. I've been kind of offline for a little bit due to um, issues going on where I live and... Um, this was the thing I've been thinking about and it was, you know, it does get asked to me a lot. Why are there so many? I don't know what to pick. That's what scares me away from Linux. And it's kind of a bummer to hear people say that they know that windows is windows. Uh, get the latest version. Boom. You're on windows. Get the latest version of Mac OS 10. Boom. That's it. You don't have to look at a hundred different versions of Mac OS 10 and decide which one you want. And I'm all for choice. I love open source. I love the whole idea of being able to choose what you do with your system. But guys, come on. This is getting ridiculous. There's too many. There's just too many. And a hundred, that's just this list here. There's more than that out there. And there's more than a hundred distributions of Linux out there. And, and it's just, I mean, there's like, look, I mean, there's Slackware. At least that's unique. What's smart OS? I, I know I can go on about this all night long. So I'm going to end it here and I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope maybe this video will um, get some discussion going in the community and you know, maybe we, it'd be interesting to see what you guys think. So comment below or join my discord. I just created a discord server. Um, you can get there by going to fratum.com slash discord and the invite code is on there. Um, not too many people in the room now, but I would like to, you know, I know everybody has a discord, right? It's like everybody and his sister is starting a discord. I actually started this one months ago and, and never told anyone about it. And just recently decided, you know what, maybe it's a good place to discuss stuff like this. So if you want to join discord, I'm in there. 
in the daytime even when I'm at work I usually have it up on my screen or at least have an alert so if someone um, pings me on there I see it and um, you're welcome to join it it's and share the invite code it's not a patron thing I'm not doing patron so anyways I hope you like this video I hope it makes you stop and think about this fragmentation issue that I see it as fragmentation in the Linux world um, if I'm wrong please post below I would love to be wrong and I'd love to I don't mind being corrected tell me what you think anyways I hope you have a wonderful night and sorry about all the crazy noises that are going on in the background I adopted two new cats um, during the firestorms of California and they're two boy cats they're brothers and about a year and a half old and they're rambunctious and this time of night which is about 11 o'clock p.m. pacific um, they go um, bananas and start attacking my legs and trying to get on my keyboard and they want to lay on my chest and right now they're they're playing on a, a stack of boxes and that's where the noise is anyways have a wonderful night and take care bye bye